In part three of this series, we are talking money, dinero, cold hard cash, and the different ways that you can earn it through Gino Pet Habitats. Kevin goes into detail on exactly what habitats are, how they work, and how you can get one, or even three through minting. Don't have money to buy a habitat? It's all good. You can actually rent a habitat from someone who does have a habitat. So let's go ahead and dive right into part three of this series. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into uh, the habitat. We, we touched on this briefly, um, but I definitely wanna, wanna get into, into more of the details. Uh, I know this, this, is, this was recently released this month, um, and this is something that you don't get for free in the game. This is if you wanna be part of the economy, if you wanna be part of the earn part of the economy, um, this is it, it. You have to purchase a habitat, right? So, mm -hmm. can you it, break down exactly what role the habitats play in the game? I think to understand the role of the habitats, maybe take we'll take a step back and, and understand exactly what we're trying to build here in terms of the economy. Typically, with it, with a game like this, you have a free loop, and then the developer, the, the game maker, the studio, is selling items special uh, rare you know, attributes, equipment, uh, special content to the players for uh, a premium. And it's an entirely closed system, right? So you pay money to the developer, they, they allow you to you know, play the expansion that gets you the special sort of doom. And you know, everything happens within this closed system where there's no change in actual ownership of the assets. You're paying for the privilege of being able to access this content. That's not what we want to do. We want to create a Web3 in-game economy where every asset in the game, every item, whether it's a Genopets toy, it's food, it's wings, it's you know new set of horns, all of these are tokenized assets that the players can own and trade um, and, and transact with amongst themselves. In order to really facilitate that though, we realized that we need to give players the ability to be agents and to be masters of their own destiny within this economy. And, and the habitat, which is narratively the Genopet's home, is really the key to unlocking that. By purchasing a habitat, you are purchasing, ultimately, the ability to create items for the game. So right now, it's crystals. There, you refine them. I see you know, some players are selling them. Some players are using them to upgrade their habitats for stronger capabilities. But ultimately, this is, this is sort of the next immediate big release that we are we're pushing for the ability to craft will mean that you can take these crystals that the habitat generates use your steps and turn the steps into the required ingredient token the key token and then combine them to create things like food toys special items com uh you know equipment and so the players are going to be the ones not only utilizing the these items and the content but they will also be creating and supplying it as well to each other. And so this player to player economy where the players have control over the creation of these assets is integral to what we're doing. It's a little scary to be honest with you because I, especially for me, I come from an industry where you try to give the players as little control as possible for their own good and for the good of the overall uh, the system. But in our game, we're giving them unprecedented control. And the habitat is, is really what unlocks that. If you have a habitat, you'll be able to make augments. You'll be able to refine and create crystals that, that can be combined to make a cooler and stronger mm -hmm. toy than what the, the free player might find in his free journey. And so these are real, that's not a big deal when everything exists inside a closed server, but it is a very big deal when it's an open system and players can, can freely trade that and, and, and own those assets. And that's why the habitat is so critical because that is what allows the player to have that capability. Okay, that's awesome. So we have another community question here submitted by uh, Andres Calvo. Um, so he just got himself a code. Um, he says, are habitats needed to advance in the game? Uh, if you're talking about the pet game, the pet RPG, are habitats necessary for you to enjoy having a, an active lifestyle journey with your pet and exploring the Genoverse? No, and that that will never be the case. Habitats will never be a requirement for you to enjoy the game. However, they will give you a lot of advantages and they'll 
and really, actually, I, I kind of view the habitat as unlocking a different game within the game. It's the crafting and economy game. With the habitat now, the game that you're playing is, well, what items are in demand? Like, are is this a particular corn augment that allows you to perform this particular attack or this crystal that turns your geno pet into a certain elemental type for battle? Is that what's in demand right now because of the meta? If so, let me plan for that. Let me refine the crystals. Let me, sure, let, me, let me make sure I have the recipes and let me make that and let me put it up on the marketplace. It's a whole different game. It's an economic game, which some players are interested in, but we think many players won't be interested in. They'll, they'll be the, the beneficiaries, right? They'll be buying those items, but it's a very different game from the active lifestyle game. Now it all starts, it all comes back to move to play. It all starts with taking steps because whether you want to craft or whether you want to explore, you're going to need to walk, but uh, they're kind of different games, and and one is a game within the game, so to speak. The the next question that that I have for you, another community sent question, is uh, from a uh, Big Daddy. Um, he says, if I was looking to purchase a habitat, what specifics do I need to take into account when making the decisions? Because I know there's uh, there's different terrains, there's different uh, levels. So what, what is it that we have to focus on and, and take into account when making that decision? The first thing you'll want to look at if you were, you know, it, checking out a marketplace and just browsing the listings, the first thing you'd want to look at is whether it is a Genesis habitat or if it is a non-Genesis, a regular habitat. The Genesis habitats were the very first habitats ever formed. They're special. Um, they have some rare abilities that regular habitats, even habitats that they themselves create, won't have. For example, every habitat has an elemental type, as you mentioned. The, the elemental types have no intrinsic advantage over one another. They're all going to be, um, you know, unique in their own way. There's no, you know, element that's stronger or better than the, than the other at the moment, um, as far as habitats are concerned. However, your elemental type determines what type of crystal um, your your habitat generates. These are the ingredient base components for a lot of the crafting that's going to be released within the game. So if you have a fire habitat, it's going to make fire crystals. Um, the Genesis habitat is the only type of habitat that's capable of refining any type of elemental crystal based on the holder's desire. So there's a lot of flexibility there. It doesn't seem like much, but when you consider the fact that we're about to release over 90 different craftable items, each with their own recipe, which requires different mixes of crystals, you start to see how how powerful that actually is. You you don't have to go if you just have a Genesis habitat, you may not need to go and buy more crystals. Whereas if you have an Earth habitat and you want to make this one particular item that requires a fire crystal as well as an Earth crystal, you're going to go have to buy that fire crystal. So that flexibility is there. They also have a marginal increase. Debatable. The holders think it's too little. The non-holders think it's too much. But the Genesis habitats have a have a uh, increased cap in terms of how much key token the in-game utility and reward token they can uh, they can harvest using their steps there's different levels to the habitats and uh depending on the level is that it, yeah, you have uh, yes. more access to to how much you can earn is that how it is yeah um and so to, to come back to the original question you'll want to check if it's genesis or not and then you'll want to check its level um, because there's three levels and the higher level it is, the more key you can harvest and the more crystals you can refine, the more you can kind of do a, pretty much everything. It is just a more powerful habitat. And then you may want to look at whether it's uh, connected to any other habitats because we have created this feature where if you have one, if you have a primary habitat, you can connect two more habitats to it, uh, up to two more. And that will uh, cumulatively increase its harvest the key token earning power as well as its uh, re refinement capabilities as well. Okay, and and how is it that you restore and repair these habitats? So repairing is the maintenance action. Mm -hmm. You can you you burn a crystal in order to restore one lifespan. Um, every habitat starts with ninety lifespan as well as a certain amount of durability depending on its level. Level ones have 90 durability, level twos have 180 durability, and level threes have 270 durability. And that's just the number of times you can repair it 
uh, basically by burning a crystal to restore. Now, I know that there is a rental aspect to these habitats. Um, and this is a question submitted by Paja Seth or pa Paja Seth. I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, but um, they're basically asking, can you share habitats with friends? And uh, and I know that there's there's a renting rental feature. So can you um, elaborate a little bit on the rental feature and how it benefits, how it works and how it benefits uh, both the owner and the user who is renting? It's a really key part of this player to player economy and this player led ecosystem that we're trying to design. If you own a habitat, you should be able to rent it out if you want. You should be able to make agreements with other players and, and share the benefits. There's two types of rental uh, contracts that are possible with the habitat. Um, first is the delegation of harvesting rights. So, so you can delegate someone as the harvester. That means that they will walk and they will convert their steps into key token for you. And then you as the landlord and they as the harvester will split the key that is generated from walking. So that's one way to share the, the capability of, of, of the habitat. And, and many of our partners um, and, and guild partners are, are utilizing this mechanic. The other rental type is the alchemist role, which is essentially you're renting out the, the, the NFT crafting and refining rights. Um, if you assign someone as an alchemist, they're the ones who can refine crystals. They own the crystals that are generated, but they pay you a fixed amount in rent for that rental period. And, and all of this has been built in as part of habitat management um, because it's a, it's a key part of how we think the habitats are going to be used uh, for the players. Another uh, community member, uh, er Erwan, asked, can I harvest daily key and rent it at the same time? So a player can harvest from one habitat or one habitat setup within 24 hours. So you would probably not want to harvest and like be a renter and rent it out at the same time. I think you would want either you're going to you're going to harvest from the habitat that you can harvest from. If you have an extra habitat, then you would rent it out and someone else will harvest from it for you and split the harvest with you as the landlord. How many habitats can you own? And this is submitted by Slim D. How they, they want to know how many, and you and you mentioned that you can put together uh, three habitats. I think you said you could connect up to, yeah. up to three. So how many habitats can you own? And um, you, you, you mentioned one of the perks already of having multiple habitats. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think the main benefit of multiple habitats comes from being able to connect them mm -hmm. and you can connect up to two to one to get a, a setup of three habitats one primary and two sub habitats connected beyond that i mean look you can own as many habitats as you want however there are certain guard guardrails and parameters around the usage of habitats which means that yeah you can't like i said you can't own 10 habitats and just harvest from all of them uh, in, in a day um, however, you can refine crystals from from all of them, and these are the the sort of nuances of the game that I encourage people to to check out the light paper, the white paper, to truly understand. But at a high level, um, you can own as many as you want. You can really only make use of one, however many you can manage on the interface. But as far as harvesting is concerned, uh, within a 24-hour period, you you, you would want to be focused just on the one habitat or the one with connected habitats that uh that's your main harvesting one i hope you guys have enjoyed part three of this interview with gino pet coo kevin kim if you guys want a free activation code i have 100 to give away drop a comment below referencing your favorite part of this video with your thoughts or comments on it and of course make sure you subscribe to the channel goes without saying now make sure to watch part four of this interview where we cover some of the new game features coming to Genopets, including my personal favorite, skill-based battling. No more random number generators or dumb luck. Genopets skill-based battling might actually be game changer. Kevin shares some alpha on exactly what this will look like. Just click on the video. If you're not already, make sure to hit subscribe. Peace and love.